Well, Rick and Ricky are back. They're uh, building some columns now for the uh, um, to hold up the gate. We're going to build a little courtyard here in the front yard so we have a little privacy from the street. They were here earlier. They're the ones that built the foundation and did all the, uh, the block work down towards the lake. And hit the Well, Casey and Jeff are putting the fence up, plastic fence, and Casey made a jig for this, of course. <laughs> He's very efficient. <laughs> I've been called work. Pass. Get outside. He's gonna do them all, right? <laughs> so what do they call that thing? A story pole. Oh, why is it called a story pole? In case you have to tell you, <laughs> it tells the same story each and every time. Oh, that's interesting. It's a different type of jig. matching teeth. Oh, those are real high, fine high precision. I have uh, these tools, Incra gauge, in the shop and then what you can do is they've got self-adhesive tabs that you put up here that you can laminate or, or they just stick like on these other jigs uh -huh. and then what that does is get you that exact dimension like when you're making dovetails or or different slots for your routers oh. there's different jigs and there's probably 30 or 40 different templates so you just put that plastic on the jig and this whole Incra design has these interlocking mesh teeth so you can always do that high precision repeatable accuracy to go in there so like it would be a number so I wouldn't have to constantly look at four and a half but yeah that's uh, incorrect that's oh where did you buy that do you remember this is this is 25 years old but Rockler has a lot of these jigs oh, okay uh, now um, but I've got different different templates different jigs for router tables and for the table saw uh -huh. So I can do stuff on table saw. Pretty. Okay, what back I on really the fence. Was, uh, just staring on up. What's that? You got uh, you got yours out. Huge advantage on how expensive painting everything is, huh, Jeff? Yeah. <coughs> you can see there's quite a bit of overlap there, so if your posts are a little bit off, it'll still work. But you have a bigger gap, you know, air gap.
come in. Wow, wasn't that slick? She's a beaut. Oh, ain't she a beaut ball? <laughs> well, the house is virtually done now, except for the carpets. I'll probably wait till after the landscaping to do the carpets. And uh, Jeff is out here. He wired the uh, the lights and the steps here, and also the uh, the outlet, the water and the electrical outlet on these two walls here. And um, they've been digging out the topsoil. This guy here. And you can't get a tractor down there anymore, so he's been taking it out bucket at a time, five bucks, five gallons at a time, and uh, you know carrying it out to the front where he has a trailer. And here's the trailer in the front yard that he's been filling up five gallons of dirt at a time. He started yesterday morning, late morning, and. This trailer is almost full. They started pouring the uh, footings for the uh, the walls here on the other house, and um, we had to get it. Well, I started in February trying to get the permits, and um, we had to get approved by the homeowners association, and they sent it to their architectural committee. And then we had to go to the building department, their planning department had to look at it, and then they sent out the building inspector and he had to inspect the footings. And finally today we get to start pouring. So Rick and Ricky are setting the, uh, the first chorus, and this one's real critical to get it right. The whole rest of the pillar depends on it. He's got the one over there in already. He had to uh, trim down a door, solid core door, which I thought was solid, but look at this material in here. Kind of like a particle board. It's a particle board, right? This is actually pretty good. Sometimes it's a lot. There's a lot more voids, but mm -hmm. since it's probably an exterior in a good door company, this is pretty tight, tight grouped. I've seen some that are just horrible. But you can see. Oh, okay. So he finished it. He oh, that's the bottom. Okay, there's the top. So this was up there. So then I cut this piece off uh -huh. and then dado this like an inch. So I'll come in here and create an inch and then glue that back on. So now you can do all your toolings, your routering, nice job. everything like yeah. that. You never know it didn't come from the no. factory that way. No, and you know. This was a 48-inch door, and you had to cut cut it down, you know, like about three inches off of it. Um, it goes on the uh, the basement under my house. Basement? They have basements in California? Wait, yes, sir. Those words don't go together, do they? Oh, only the smart people do. <laughs> well, it's not underground. It's under the house, so that still qualifies as a basement. Subterranean. Oh, okay. I would have liked to seen the elevator with a basement. Oh, <laughs> I'll, we'll have to go back and get those elevator guys here again. <laughs> Here's a tool that Casey used to uh, put the hinges on, and he has different thicknesses of this rail here, and also you can adjust the separation here for different hinges. He has a set of four inches right now, and uh, he put four hinges on that door, so he has these four parts on it. And he used he used this to router the um, the edge with the. Uh, and goes on. And here's the basement. I don't know if it will show up with no light, but you do have a basement here. It'll be handy for storage. It's nice and cool in here too. I just routed this a minute ago. And this is just a regular ordinary tool that people have. <laughs> Setting up his router for this, this jig here.
these are adjusted for this was for repetitivity mm -hmm. and you know what the last door was an inch and three quarters it looks like oh it's gonna work yeah and that's one common reason that you have a six inch common spread mm -hmm. between deadbolt and that uh, a lot of times if you go less or something then the set pin goes right in the hole <laughs> can't use it <laughs> so they they do got kind of a standard because we'll put the security so I'll re redo the it's a different size yeah different size jig and then uh, we'll put those security things on there so it'll be a deeper plunge too but we'll go ahead and utilize that security oh okay uh, up there right so I'll reset it to that thickness mm -hmm. and let's see I don't think that's that's not going to be it. It's so you got special jig that I made for the deadbolts. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. You just go a sixteenth of round different because it's all set up for that particular blade. This bushing. Oh, that bushing there. Huh? You right. know. So then that will be the the inside dimension. Yeah, there. is not really much different. Um, some dirt's been moved around, but you can't see it from here. And that there's a door in that storage room now. And I'm rocking around. I'm on my boat dock. Well, we're at the end of week 53, and you saw the week. The work has been on the outside this week. The inside's pretty much done, except for the carpeting. And I'm going to do that after the uh, the landscaping is in. They did some work on the old house here. They put some pillars up here. So, the next step next week, we're going to put a uh, wrought iron uh, gate on it. If we can find another wrought iron guy, the guy we used flaked out on us. Somehow he just stopped returning our phone calls, and we had a couple jobs for him. And they put this white fence up, and the little sidewalk between here. And we'll leave the panel out until I sell the house, then we'll put the final panel in. And um, the next week they're going to do some landscaping in the back, so they're going to um, build the uh, some retaining walls and um, get, get the rest of the sprinklers in, the timers. And um, the following week they'll put the plants in, and that should finish everything. So it looks like two weeks left. <laughs>